When we are modeling absorbers and strippers in chemical engineering, uh, the Kremser method works great when we're working with pure uh, solvents and uh, very dilute systems. But that still leaves a huge portion of uh, absorption and stripping that we have yet to be able to model. And so the question to ask is how do we actually do that? And uh, what I'll discuss in this video is how do we model non-dilute absorbers and strippers or systems in which we have impure solvent streams entering our system. And the way we do that is by defining something referred to as a solute-free basis. And a solute-free basis uh, works by defining new variables. So instead of little x, the molar ratio of the absorbate in your liquid stream, we will define uh, capital X to be equal to little xA divided by one minus xA. And this is equivalent to the mole ratio of your absorbate in your solute divided by the mole ratio of your uh, absorbate in your solvent. And we do the same for uh, the vapor phase mole fractions, so we will have Ya divided by 1 minus Ya. And the same can be said of the uh, capital Y variable we have just defined. Um, it too is equal to the solute mole ratio of your absorbate uh, divided by the solvent mole ratio of your uh, absorbate. And uh, we can relate capital X and capital Y by the relationship. If we note, and it is still the case that the solvent, or sorry, the vapor mole fraction of your absorbate, Y sub A, is still equal to K times X sub A. And if we plug this relation into the above equation, what we will find is that capital Y is equal to K little x divided by 1 minus kx. And if we now plot this value, um, what we'll find is that our curve, or our um, plot of capital Y versus capital X, now resembles some kind of curve that looks like this. And so we'll have multiple uh, values across this uh, equilibrium curve. And this is for a non-dilute system. And uh, what this equilibrium curve tells us is the outlet stage compositions. And so what that means is if we were interested in figuring out what, uh, in this case, this a stream exiting tray one here would have a composition x1. If we wanted to find what the relationship between x1 and y out was, uh, we could do that uh, given um, x1, we would evaluate capital X, we would solve for capital X, we would check what y, capital Y coordinate we would have, and then we would solve for um, little y to get y out. And it is common that you will be asked in these types of uh, questions you can expect to be presented with uh, in chemical engineering classes, uh, what is the minimum solvent flow rate that will be required for a given system, um, or what are the required, or what number of stages will be required if you use a particular solvent flow rate? And to answer questions like these, uh, there is a graphical solution that we would that we turn to in macabre Teeley diagrams, uh, and in these diagrams what we analyze is the uh, equilibrium line. So this will be your vapor mole, uh, mole ratio in your, uh, of your absorbate, and the x-axis will be the liquid mole ratio of your absorbate. And this right here will be your equilibrium line, and the slope of your equilibrium line will be equivalent to the k value um, which will be given to you and it will be a constant value. 
It is important to note that k is still a constant value in all of this, um, despite it being a non-dilute uh, regime. Um, but to uh, so we will have a line in our um, Tweet diagram, and the question you might consider is uh, for an absorber, what is L min? And the way we would evaluate that is uh, we would be uh, told that we have some kind of required uh, extraction. And we will be told uh, what our inlet solvent mole ratio is, as well as our, um, as well as a required uh, outlet uh, vapor phase mole ratio. And with this information, what we would do is we would plot it. So this point here uh, will have coordinates of x in, y out. And uh, we will be told what the required purity of our exiting uh, carrier or uh, vapor phase would be. So this would be y in. And if we draw a diagonal line across, I'm sorry, a horizontal line across, and then we let the uh, point, sorry, if I can draw a straight line, if we connect this point and let it touch the equilibrium curve, and this is a straight line, um, the slope of this line will be equal to the minimum solvent flow rate divided by the mole rate of your carrier. And in the case of absorbers, that would be the vapor phase uh, uh, mole flow rate. And in the case when uh, we are asked another question, such as uh, what number of stages are required, given uh, some liquid over uh, vapor mole for, uh, flow rate, uh, the way we answer that using uh, macabre Tilly diagrams uh, is to again turn to the chart, have our equilibrium line, and we would be given uh, what our uh, point x in, y out are, so that would already be specified. We would know what our required um, inlet vapor mole fraction is, and with L over V, we would find the slope of our operating line. And so the operating line uh, will look, so drawing the horizontal out from our uh, inlet vapor uh, mole ratio of absorbate, we will be told, uh, we can now make a slope, and then this will tell us uh, what our outlet liquid mole ratio of our absorbate is. And to find now at this point what uh, number of stages will be needed, the way we can do that is by drawing steps up this function, um, connecting our operating line to our equilibrium line. And so our outlet term, so our y in x out would represent our bottom tray where we are getting in our dirty vapor stream and we are about to start extracting it. And what we are going to do is uh, draw a step like this. So we will go right down uh, vertically, and every time we need to touch the equilibrium line, we are going to add one more required stage. So at every stage or tray, 
we need to reach equilibrium or uh, vice versa. So um, this would be plus one tray. And then we go right off to the um, left until we hit our operating line. And if I assume that we barely uh, were just above it, um, we still would not have the required uh, outlet purity in our vapor phase. So if we had to draw another line, we would do that and uh, continue on like so. So this would be another plus one tray if I was able to draw this a little bit better. Uh, and just to uh, hopefully kind of uh, clarify this point, if I were to assume that our, our x in y out point was actually here, uh, we would keep going until our operating line had a value, uh, a y out value lower than what we had uh, given uh, been given as a requirement. Um, sorry about that confusion. But uh, this concludes uh, a general introduction into how do we handle systems that uh, are non-dilute. Uh, a final note would be if we are instead working with strippers, uh, our operating lines will lie beneath the equilibrium curve. So strippers uh, are things that move the absorbate from a liquid into a gas. And in these cases, we would have operating lines that lie below our equilibrium curve or line. And uh, we would still uh, approach them the same way to find the number of minimum stages uh, as well as the uh, minimum flow rates. So to find minimum flow rates, we uh, let our operating line contact our equilibrium curve. And an uh, important thing to note is at L min, we need an infinite number of stages. Uh, so if I were to draw this out graphically, uh, switching back over to absorbers, what we have when we let our operating line touch the equilibrium line is uh, a pinch point. And so when we encounter pinch points, uh, while we are trying to evaluate the number of trays that are going to be required, what we'll see is that uh, in this region, infinitely many uh, trays are needed to reach our required uh, purity of our uh, solvent or carrier phase. Um, and yeah, so I think this wraps up uh, a, a general introduction to uh, non-dilute systems of absorbers and strippers. Let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.